hey what's going on guys welcome to a, another tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to talk about how uh, we usually set up our line for surf casting and uh, what we are prim primarily going to be discussing today is how to set up a, a fish finder rig or a, or, a, or a bottom rig with a sliding weight and uh, yeah let's get right to it so guys to start off you are going to need your leader, leader material, you are going to need a sinker, you are going to need a plastic or rubber bead, and a barrel swivel, your hook line, and your choice of hook. Okay guys, so to start off with, uh, let's begin with the leader. Now. I usually use a, a shorter leader, maybe five to six feet, because I don't, my, my, my leader does not pass through the guides. Uh, if you are fishing in a place that you need a super extra long leader and uh, you need uh, your, what do you call it, your leader to f go through your guides, then you are more, I mean, you can, you, you can have this as long as you want, right? And this, at this end, this is where you would connect, uh, use either an FG knot or a double uni knot if it's not going through the guides, uh, connect it to your main line, right? So I usually have it about, say, four to, four to five feet, maybe sometimes longer, depending uh, on the rod that I'm using, because sometimes if you're using a short rod, you can't have a very long lead either, because that makes it difficult to cast. If, if your leader is not going through your guides. So basically we have your leader, coming down to this swivel here and we have a running sinker so we have your, your uh, leader going right through the hole in the in the sinker and we also have a bead here to protect this knot see I'm using a, a, a uni knot here and see what will happen is without this bead this uh, weight every time you cast or retrieve it's going to keep coming and banging on the knot and over time it can weaken that knot and break so we just use uh, either a plastic or a rubber bead here to act as a buffer so that protects the knot uh, really nicely then from your swivel we have your hook line now again your hook line the uh, the size and the breaking strength is really up to you I usually use anything anything from 40 pounds to 60 pounds uh, and even the length how, how long you want how, how, how long you want this distance between your the swivel and the hook is really up to you I, f I find that if you're really trying to get distance while casting the longer this uh, hook line is the harder it is because this tends to sometimes catch the wind and there's like a uh, I mean I call it a helicopter that's what it looks like it looks like helicopter uh, rotors you know flying around and that drastically cuts your casting distance so I generally keep keep about a foot nothing more um, and I've some people feel that using longer leader they'll get a better hookup ratio and I, I really haven't found a difference between long leader and short leader the only difference that I do find is that with a really long leader sometimes if there are smaller fish around bait stealers and they're nibbling on your bait here and there's a lot of slack line here and this is how it's going to look actually hold on there you go now pretend you've casted this and this is down on the ocean floor and you have and imagine that this is really long your hook line and you have little fish picking up your bait swimming around a little bit and you know munching on your bait you don't really feel feel it onto your 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 rod and sometimes you don't you don't know that you've been rubbed off and you're sitting there with a you know with a empty hook so i don't like to keep the hook line too long but again it's really up to you guys and what you guys prefer i find that when it comes to sens bite sensitivity and also casting distance a shorter uh, hook line is much better usually 10 to 12 inches is more than ample and this hook line goes down to your hook of choice uh, you guys know that we prefer using circle hooks uh, but you know it's really up to you guys to use whichever kind of hook that you you all are comfortable using so that's your basic fish finder setup with a sliding rig right and the reason we have this sliding rig is so that when the fish 
pulls your line it doesn't really feel the feel the sinker so it allows the fish to kind of uh, there are some fish that are a little finicky they can tend to pick up your bait and the moment they feel some tension they can they can spit your spit your hook out but this gives you that ad few additional seconds um, and ensures that you know that they swallow it a little bit more maybe and uh, this is this is my my preferred uh, bottom uh, surf casting rig that I, that I like to use now when it comes to the bottom rig the fish finder rig there are um, there is another variation that you can do with this now here I'm using an egg sinker because usually when you're casting for distance this shape is the most aerodynamic and gives you the best distance uh, but sometimes this round shape doesn't hold too well on the ocean floor you know it doesn't de really dig in especially when there's a strong current so in, a in at times like that where I need uh, uh, the way to really dig in and hold the position uh, what I normally do is I use a pyramid sinker and how I no normally set this up is I mean there's there's three ways that you can set this up basically you can you can remove your egg sinker out and this in the same way you can pass your leader through your egg, egg sinker so it's basically the same setup but with a different uh, sinker right the second way would be is to use a snap swivel so you could pass the snap swivel through the leader like so oh boy there you go and because this has an open eye here you could open the snap swivel and you could just clip that on and the advantage of this is that you can you can change the weight anytime you want if you want to go heavier or lighter or maybe you want to use something that has a ring but a different shape it's it's very easy to uh, very easy to uh, change it out and the third way which is the proper way to do it is to get what you call a sinker slider right um, what you basically do is it goes in like so right same same as a snap swivel same concept um, and you can open this and uh, you can put in whatever weight that you want now sometimes uh, when the current is really strong we like to use these bomber weights or uh, well basically what these are is that even you undo these right they become like anchors see that and these are really awesome these are four ounce and they cast really far so basically you would put this onto your snap on the slider right and you would cast this out and when this hits the ocean floor it'll move around a little bit and it'll very quickly it'll dig in and this 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 is not going to move Right, so it'll hold your, your bait in a, in, a, in a specific spot. And what I really like about this is that if you, if while, on your re, while reeling back, if you do get snagged on anything, these arms are retractable. So the moment they have some uh, tension going the opposite way, they just open up. See that? They just open up. And if it's snagged, it just releases, and you're able to reel your weight back in. Oops. <laughs> Make sure you don't do that, guys. <laughs> Stick yourself with the hook. Problem. So yeah, guys. So uh, as you can see, the the bottom rig is a very simple rig, and it gives you a few options depending on where you're fishing. Uh, whether you you know it helps you you can tailor this according to your requirement on that day when you're fishing and where you're fishing. Uh, I would only recommend uh, the pyramid sinkers if you are um, fishing on a sandy bottom, meaning. These weights, I mean, especially the pyramid sinker, is um, very likely to get snagged, especially when you're reeling back, reeling your line back to you. So I would not, I would never use this in a place where there is any reefs or rocks, or a lot of structure. If there's a mild structure, yes. If I know that I can get away with uh, not getting snagged, then I would use this. 
If I was on a beach and I really needed my line to be in a, in a, in a particular area where I know the fish are holding, uh, but the, the, what do you call it, the, the egg sinker is not doing the job because every time it lands on the bottom, it gets rolled around by the current, I would definitely, what I would use is one of these, uh, one of these uh, Sputniks. Actually, this brand is called Sputnik Sinkers. You could just check it out online. I'll try to leave the link below if you guys want to order this. Uh, so we would we would generally use these bombers, and because you know that this digs in well and holds holds that spot. Uh, but my absolute favorite is to use uh, the bottom rig with with a teardrop or a round uh, egg, egg sinker, because even I found that uh, even when you get snagged, it's easier to get get out of the snag if the if your sinker is shaped like this. Because the moment you get snagged, if, if, you, if you use the waves and kind of reduce the tension and, you know, play with it a little bit and be a little patient, uh, eight times out of ten, you can get this guy out. So this is, this is my preference, but again, depends on where, where I'm fishing. So make sure you guys uh, do some research, uh, know what the ocean flow is like, um, see how far you guys have to cast, and then tailor, if you're using the bottom rig, tailor your bottom rig to uh, suit the area that you're fishing. So there you go guys, thank you for joining us for this tutorial. I hope to do another one soon, so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah, please if you haven't already liked and subscribed to our channel, please do so guys, we really appreciate your support. Uh, catch you guys on the next episode, take care, bye bye.